two, one. Um. In my brother love voice for Valentine's Day, I just got to say that I love you, James. <laughs> See that broke him already. Broke never him already pop for it. Never He'd already do pop. that again. I never popped already. Uh, oh man, mission accomplished. We could go ahead and shut down the show. But in the spirit of, of Valentine's Day and No Mercy, the Almighty in the background, we are the sideline junkies, WrestleManiacs. Once again, it is myself, the People's Choice, Don Rodriguez, coming with that guy, uh, the big man. The Nubian Sumo, the James, representing what you're smoking, what you're drinking over there, sir. Uh, the Nubian Sumo tonight is powered by. Ooh, the good stick. The Shadow King by AJ Fernandez. And what I have discovered as my new favorite bourbon. Lusty Claw. That's a nice bottle. What are you going to do with it when you finish? You're going to like uh, repurpose it and fill it with something else, or I got a friend of mine. That makes, I got a friend of mine. Uh, shout out to Raj and Mikhail. Raj was uh, is uh, one of our frequent listeners, and his wife likes to make lamps out of these. So I can I'm going to yeah, give her this perfect. bottle. I'm going to give her this bottle so she can make a lamp out of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Need to have her uh, take a couple pictures of some of the lamps. We can uh, post it in the background or, or in the foreground, or however you do all this lovely Skype wonderful work. Uh, get them uh, some business. I'd love to see what she does with that. that, okay, that that's well, a nice bottle. We can make that happen. And plus, I'm um, shout out to. Faye Jackson, independent wrestler. I am now a new, the newest member of her creep squad. I hear that. You think she's ever going to get to, to TNA or, or AEW or one of those two, probably? I'm, I'm hoping that she does. She's a great wrestler. I mean, she's got a good personality. I mean, great gimmick. Uh, great, good, great gimmick. So, I mean, she was trying. She was at one point trying to get on with the uh, uh, as a dancer for the Raw Underground thing that they were doing, but it didn't work out. But hopefully, she'll be getting on at some point with somebody that uh, she can put her on TV because she really needs to be on. And uh, well, hopefully, we'll be able to put it, and we should be able to put a hashtag on her when we, for this show. So we shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen uh, watch some of her videos and, and stuff like that. She's very entertaining. Um, great, great personality. A lot of folks I haven't seen uh, anybody said anything bad about her uh, in the independence. So yeah, I, I think you know she will be uh, somebody that would that would do well. Just yeah, she's a lot of people. She's awesome. a lot of people's play aunt. So yeah, you know, she's a lot of people shout her out a lot. So shout, I'm giving a shout out to Faye with your. Fine self. Yeah. All I mean, I like to get, get that get that AEW dark opportunity. So the, the ball's in uh, Tony Khan's court for that. So we'll we'll see what happens. But how's uh how's your time been going, man? Uh, what you been up to? Uh, just working. You know, doing my thing, trying to build up my cigar collection and my bourbon and whiskey collection, so I you know get through this winter. See what happens in the spring. You know, my alma mater has shut down all their sports except for softball, looks like. You know, uh, but, but, but we, sport. but we, but, but hey, my alma, North Carolina Central University uh, has a show on uh, ESPN Plus with Chris Paul. So you need, y'all need to check that out. It's going to be, it's a, it's a good thing. So check that out too. We need a lot of plugs. We and get paid for today, but that's good. That's all right. That's all we'll, right. We'll start 2020 off with uh, showing the love to everybody else, so I don't mind. But eventually, better get that dag on check. Just saying. Just oh, it's it, it, it's coming. We working on it. 
I hear that. Well, I guess we might as well get down to, as they love to say, brass tacks and talk about the reason for the season as we wait for the possibility of the big guy KG to join us. If not, then we'll probably fire him. Um, but I guess we got to talk about some sports entertainment, wrestling, wrestling, and what better way to get started since you all in a creep squad than for us to jump right into that's just Nubian, so you can fill everybody in on what's happening the world of new uh, and all the independents, maybe what's going on with uh, uh, TNA at this very moment as their pay per view is happening. And then I think there's some cool stuff that may be going down in AEW we need to discuss in retrospect of some uh, topics and crossovers that we discussed. What was it, maybe? two months ago, two, three months ago, that, that we were hashing out, like, maybe, could it be possible? Will it work? Won't it work? Who needs to jump on what? So uh, I will leave that the ball in your court, sir, so that way you can get us started and bring everybody up to speed. All right. Well, first of all, we're going to say a happy birthday to a gentleman that was on one my um my uh tape my round table discussion today's his birthday so ecclesiastes rayford better known as clee to everybody that listened to the show uh he's having his birthday today he's with uh the who i mentioned earlier raj uh raj thompson and his wife mikhail at their house with a bunch of uh my good time gang durham chapter members uh having a good time and and fellowshipping smoking and drinking. So this one, this Nubian suit, this that's so Nubian is for Mr. Klee tonight. So uh, happy birthday, sir. All right. So first of all, like uh, we, like you, like you just said, we're going to go into Impact where they're having their no surrender uh, pay-per-view at this very moment. Uh, they have already had the Triple XL and Tamil Dashwood versus Decay match. They have had the, um, Cody Diener versus Jake something. Cody Diener's have broken up now uh, where uh, Cody Diener has joined up with uh, Eric Young and his group Violet by Design. And uh, Jake has gone back, has reverted back to his independent uh, gimmick where he calls himself Jake something. So mm-hmm. he, so they had a match tonight. Uh, Fire and Flavor, who is... Uh, uh, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles, who have now who have won, won the Knockouts Tag Team Championship tournament, and have now the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champions are defend have defended against uh, Havoc and Nevaeh. Uh, you had a what they called a triple threat revolver match. So if you can imagine a triple threat match mixed with a gauntlet match, where the th- three guys start out the match, and then at once somebody is pinned, another person comes in. It's an interesting concept. I've never seen it, but it, it, so um, it, that was a good. That was seemed like a good match, and whatnot. So um, now uh, you also have uh, the Diana Perazzo, Kimberly, and Susan, who is uh, Sue, who's the third persona for Sue Young. Um, and uh, she's on some uh, three faces of Foley stuff right about now, going up against yeah, Jazz, is. Jazz, ODB, and Jordan Grace. Shout out to uh, ODB and Jazz. I think that's exciting that they've come back. I mean, it's, we've almost got the, the, the TNA of old. We just need a little sprinkle of Gail Kim here, there, and then we're set. Maybe a Mickey James uh, uh, spot well, somewhere. Well, uh, you got a lot of got a lot of you got a lot of throwbacks coming back into, into wrestling right now. So, I mean, it's it's possible. We'll see who else comes into into the fray. Uh, you also have uh, TJP who will be defending the X Division Championship against Rohit Raju with a returning Shira in his corner. You got the Good Brothers. The, the match has been changed. It was supposed to be the Good Brothers defending the titles against Private ADWs private party but then they add right. they added um james storm and chris saving into the match so it's a three-way now after what mm. happened uh last week on the show 
Uh, so they and then the um, world heavyweight championship match between Rich Swan and the birthday boy come to mom, come tonight for tonight. Uh, another birthday boy, Tommy Dreamer. So, yeah. um, so, t- so happy birthday to Tommy Dreamer tonight, and good luck on his uh, getting you know, going for the world heavyweight championship tonight. So, um, that's what's going on with the pay per view. Uh, some things that are going on right now: um, Josh Matthews and uh, Madison Rain, who were the commentators for the Impact show, have now dropped stepped down. And you now have um, Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown as the as the color and play by play commentators for Impact now. So yeah, I've always enjoyed Matt Stryker and his uh, use of the dictionary and the lexicon within the uh, and his knowledge of wrestling within his commentary. And D'Lo Brown, he's doing the best he can. <laughs> Look what just decided to jump in and and show up. Got it. Got his hair braided back and everything. Oh, Representing the chef. we're looking at the real deal now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the party, sir. Well, it's good to be back. Uh, I did my home for the week. You said you've been home for the week. No, no, I said I did my homework for the week. Oh, shoot. We just pretty much fired you, too. So, uh, James, you can hire him back now. He's good. He's good. Hire me back. I, hey, I got nothing to do with that, brother. I got, I don't, I don't do hiring and firing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not Kevin, I'm not Kevin Nash or Hulk Hogan up in here. I don't, I don't do the politics. He said he was, he's wearing his Creep Squad shirt, so he runs the show now. So we just gotta get rid of KG. That's what he said. That's what I heard. Yeah, we already get, we already did the shout out to Faye Faye Jackson. I'm part of the Creep Squad now. Oh, you got your shirt? Yeah, I got the shirt on now. Look, look at look, turn your camera on and everything. Get that. Get get straightened out. You know he's right, distracted. So, right. He's living life in the closet. But you know, go ahead. All <laughs> right, so um. Going going back to going back to impact. Uh, we also have speaking of the Good Brothers and everything. We know that the AEW and Impact relationship is in full swing now. Uh, you've had you've had Good Brothers going over to AEW and doing that thing. You've had Private Party. That's the actual number one contenders for the Impact Tag Team Championships. Uh, you got you know, there's. Thinking about doing some back and forth. I'm looking forward to some folks going over to AEW like a Jordan Grace. Um, you know, and hopefully she'll be able to get involved in the women's division over at AEW at some point. Uh, I would like to see Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles go over and do some things with uh, with uh, some of the girls over there. So that should be interesting. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot going on with the impact and the AEW um, relationship with a lot of thing, a lot of things in the works coming up that we'll talk about in a little bit, a little bit later. Now, as far as MLW is concerned, uh, they've had a couple of shows. They had their uh, their Coliseum um, pay per uh, pay per view that they had. Uh, they've had a few shows and whatnot. So uh, and they're still having this show on. Um, access? No, not is it access? Is that, no, on um, what's the name of that? Being Sports. So they still have this show on Being Sports. Uh, right now, you still have Jacob Fatu as the world champion. You got Alexander Hammerstone, who is the, still the national open weight champion, who is in a in, in a mix with uh, the group Contra. And right now, he's dealing with uh, the guy they call the Black Hand, Mads Kruger. Who I'm still thinking is the old Adam Rose from mm-hmm. from WWE. Uh, they haven't. Uh, they ha- he hasn't done anything. I haven't heard anything or read anything, or whether that's him or not. So I'm still trying to see what's going on with that. Um, L.A. Park and his son um, e- Eho de L.A. Park are now the tag team champions, beating defeating uh, the Von Erics. Uh, Kevin Von Erich's kids um, 
in a match that was refereed by Filthy Tom Lawler, who wound up uh, doing the swerve job on him. Yeah. So uh, you got uh, Richard Holiday, who was uh, formerly of the dynasty that was led by MJF when he was there. Um, he is now the IWA Caribbean heavyweight champion, taking that belt from Savio Vega, who actually owns and runs that organization out in Puerto Rico. And then your boy has defeated Myron Reed for the MLW middleweight championship, Mr. Leo Rush, Mr. That's Retired. Your boy. No, that's your boy, y'all's homeboy. Y'all's Marylander. He's claiming DC, so that's y'all boy. Well, no, that's his boy. And and as of last and as of last week, he is now a double champion. He is the Triple A World Cruiserweight Champion now. So he's got MLW and AWA that he's getting that he's getting ready to run. He's doing some work with New Japan with uh, New Japan Strong Show, uh, and um, he, he's just all over the place right now. So for somebody and that was retired, MTV. yeah, MTV. He, well, he's already been eliminated on MTV, so well, I mean, but know, he was but he was there, you know. So you know, now as far as interesting storylines, there you have uh, the group Contra, which is consi- which consists of Jacob Fatu. Uh, Joseph Samael, uh, Simon Gotch, and uh, Mads Kruger, who I was talking about, and uh, they um, are in a thing right now with a t- with a couple of guys that call themselves Injustice, which is uh, Myron Reed, who's the former middleweight champion that I talked about earlier, and his partner jo- Jordan Oliver. Now, back before the pandemic started. Um, there was a third member, Cotto Brazil, who Contra actually took out and caused him to retire. So they're mm. getting their get back on Con- they're trying to get their get back on Contra, and they're both going after the uh Jacob Fatu for his world championship, saying that they're both going after it and gonna get it from him. And also the other interesting um storyline going on there is um Selena De La Renta who is the former owner of Promotionis Del Dorado, where she had a whole bunch of a, a AAA wrestlers that she was bringing in and out of uh, MLW to wrestle. She manages the, 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 uh, the park, La Parks, which is L.A. Park, Ejo de L.A. Park, and L.A. Park Jr., uh, and um, of any other Mexican wrestler that decides to come through. She is act- She was actually part of a storyline where Contra ended up taking over MLW right before the pandemic started. So when they stopped doing all their filming and whatnot, it was like Contra had taken over the uh, organization. But right when they were about to start filming again, MLW took over the headquarters again and took everything back. But they found out that it was Selena De La Renta who was on the inside giving an organization, outside organization, um, influence to let Contra take over. Mm-hmm. So now the outside influence happened, came out as Azteca Underground, which is the folks who were, who, which is supposed to be Lucha Underground. So they're making this storyline as to Lucha, the folks that run Lucha Underground are influencing her and are trying to do things to try to take over MLW. So they've already approached Savio Vega to try to buy a IWA from him, and he's already right. said no. So now it's, it's just a lot of back and forth going on. We still don't know who the lead person is for uh, Azteca Underground, but they have sent Mil Muertes to Luch- to MLW under the guy under the um, management of Selena De La Renta for her to try to weak- weaken MLW from within. So right. 
that's it. That'll be that's interesting and to see. And it's a, it's it's coming off pretty well for them right now. So we'll see what happens with that. Now going to NWA, they don't have really too much going on right now. Uh, they had the NWA Shockwave show that they started to replace the other show that they did with United Wrestling Network. All they did was replay a lot of the um, those shows that they did with uh, United Wrestling Network for about six shows to get everybody caught up to what's going on. So right now you have, as far as your champions there, you have, of course, Serena Deeb, who is the women's world champion defending on AEW. You have Aaron Stevens and R J.R. Kratos, who are the tag team champions. Trevor Murdoch is still your national heavyweight champion. Uh, the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro, Elijah Burke, whichever one you want to call him, is your television champion, world television champion. And, yeah, Nick, Aldis, and Nick Aldis is still your uh, NWA world's heavyweight champion who has held that belt all going on two and a half years. It'll be two and a half years in April. So, uh, he had, there's no word on whether he's going to defend that title anytime soon. I'm hoping that he does because he's been sitting on it for a good while. And uh, the last match he had was, I think, back before Thanksgiving with uh, yeah. Michael Bennett. So um, something needs to happen there uh, to keep that going. Okay, so now on to Ring of Honor. Uh, you have um, your Roosh as your world heavyweight champion still. Uh, his brother, Dragon Lee, is the television champion. Uh, you have Jonathan Gresham as your pure champion. Gresham and Jay Lethal are still your uh, world tag team champions. Uh, Bush, uh, Bandito, Ray Uras, and Flamito are your six-man tag team champions. And the women's title is now vacant. Uh, they um, stripped the title from the last champion. And they haven't really done anything with that bill, so hopefully they will be um, getting a new women's champion soon. Um, you got the different factions that are in there uh, showing of interest. You got La Faction Ingubernable, which is which consists of Roosh, Dragon Lee, Kenny uh, King, and Roosh and Dragon Lee's father, Bestia Del Ring has joined the faction here recently. So they're causing a lot of havoc. Um, another faction that is uh, showing some promise is the Shane, Shane Taylor Promotions. Shane Taylor with a world championship opportunity in his pocket, uh, as well as a uh, six-man tag team championship opportunity, along with the tag team that he's put together called the Soldiers of Savagery, which uh, you can kind of make them out to be in like a black version of of uh the Samoa SWAT team. I mean okay. they're not they're, they're big guy they're big guys kind of like um they look more like um T Bar and um what's the what's the other guy what's the black guy's name on the on the retribution? That was uh uh oh god damn it. They look more like those two guys. I mean, cause they're big guys. I mean, they can move. They can move around right. the ring. They look pretty good. Right. Girl, uh, we'll um, come back to so, yeah, we'll come back to it. Then you have the um, the, um, a couple of factions going up against each other. OGK, which is Matt Taven and uh, Michael Bennett reforming the kingdom. They call themselves the OG OG Kingdom or just OGK up against Righteous, who is led by uh, Vincent, who was a former member of the last ver of the former version of uh, the kingdom. Uh, they're going back and forth right now, and that's the, probably the best, um, the best storyline that they have right now. And then you have the foundation who's just going up against everybody because they're trying to bring honor back into a uh, ring of honor. So that's uh, Jonathan Gresham, uh, uh, Jay Lethal, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams and Rhett Titus, who are pretty much all pro, all pure type, pure wrestlers who, who, who have been dealing with the pure uh, division a lot. But uh, you got the, tag, the, the pure champion in there. You got the, pure, the tag team champions in there. And uh, just, they're, 
they're pretty much running roughshod over pretty much everybody as far as, you know, as the babyface faction within um, Ring of Honor. So they they have they have a big show coming up soon, and they, I'll be talking about that more once more in de- details come up uh, for that show. Now, as far as New Japan, a lot of stuff has gone on in New Japan over the past yes, few months, especially with uh, the with um, Wrestle Kingdom back in January. Uh, they just had their new beginning um, events that they had uh, here in, uh, in the last week or so. Uh, so you have Kota Ibushi, who is still, who is now, I should say, but he wound up winning and surviving Wrestle Kingdom and wound up winning the double championship. So he is the IWGP heavyweight and IWGP intercontinental champion. You have um, Hiroshi Tanahashi, who came out of Wrestle Kingdom as the never open weight champion, defeating um, uh yeah, why can't I? Uh, I can't think of his name right now, uh, but he's part of the um, Los Gubernables de Japón faction. Uh, John Moxley, as of right now, is still your U.S. champion. Hiro- Hiromu Takahashi is your junior heavyweight champion as of uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Um, as of he, as of recently, you have uh, El Fantasmo and Taji Ishimori, who are your junior heavyweight tag team champions. Uh, Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, Haku's sons, are now the heavyweight tag team champions. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii, Yoshihashi, and Hiroshi Goto are still your, as of yesterday, are still your never six-man tag team champions. And Toro Yanu is your king of pro wrestling or KOPW uh, title holder for 2021 still. Now, as far as any storylines are concerned, you have um, uh, John Moxley, who's going to go up, who's finally going to go up against Kenta that you've wow. been on AEW. That match is going to happen on February the 26th. Now, that falls on a Friday, which means that it will be on the New Japan Strong show. So if you want to watch, if you uh, want to watch that, uh, that's when you need to watch it on that show, on that uh, New Japan Strong Show. If not, then New Japan has started showing um, segments or matches from AEW that involve New Japan wrestlers on their website on New Japan World. So if you don't catch it on Friday the twenty sixth, you can probably catch it the day after on New Japan World. I was now, expecting them to uh, probably show it during Dynamite. They could show it during Dynamite. They could as, show as, it as a, a cut-in match. They could do that also, but um, they haven't said that yet. So uh, I'm just letting you know what I know as of right now. Um, Chase Owens will be challenging Toro Yanu for the um, KOPW 2021 title. Uh, Chase Owens has recently moved to um, Texas. And I don't know if he actually won the belt or if he's just playing like Moose and just picking up the belt. But he's doing videos now with the old World Class Wrestling Association Texas Heavyweight Championship. What? Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar. Anybody's from, uh, for those who are not familiar with it, you can go back and look at some old uh, on YouTube and look at some old World Class. You can look up Eric Embry. As a one of the wrestlers who have held that, uh, Iceman King Parsons, um, uh, Tully Blanchard has held that belt. Uh, many, many of the Von Ericks have won it. Uh, so uh, you can go back and take a look at that belt. It's a very nice, very beautiful belt. Um, and um, you can check that out. But uh, Chase Owens, uh, as you, as I've said earlier in past shows, the KOPW title is a stipulations title. So New Japan doesn't really do stipulation matches like that. So they've brought this title to the fray so that uh, they can bring in more stipulation matches into New Japan. Now, Chase Owens is saying that he wants to have a Texas strap match with Toru Yanu. So we'll see how that goes. So um, you're, you also have uh, Bullet Club Japan versus AEW Elite or... Bullet Club America, 
as they're calling it. Um, seeing what see what happens with that. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some crossover on AEW with that at some point. They're just going to milk this out for a while. But you know, everybody's in, in, all the wrestlers in Japan are saying the real Bullet Club, and this is and um, uh, 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 Jay White is talking about how this is the real era now, where it used to be the Switchblade era. It was it's now the real era, the real Bullet Club era. So uh, we'll see what how that goes. Again, with the AEW New Japan relationship, you got a lot of stuff going on with. Now Kenta showing up on AEW television. Um, you know you have uh, Lance Archer, who was former New Japan and mm. a member of Suzuki Goon. Uh, you got all of the all of the elite wrestlers who were former New Japan. So um, it's it's going to come to the point where Bullet Club, the two Bullet Club factions, are going to have to come together and uh, get to and get do some work here soon. Now you also have. Um, the next uh, events coming up are um, the anniversary show on March the 4th, which is usually where the uh, IWGP heavyweight champion usually defends his belt against the junior heavyweight champion. So I, I would like to see, it would be a nice match to see Kota Ibushi versus Hiromu Takahashi. So I, would, I hope that that happens and they go by tradition. And continue that. Uh, the New Japan Cup will be coming up immediately after that, going from March the fifth to the twenty first. Um, that that ter- that tournament it determines who will be able to who will get the opportunity to pick their singles title to go after. So um, they will go. They'll be able to go after the IWGP belt, uh, heavyweight belt, the Intercontinental belt, or the Never Open Weight Championship usually. Now, you haven't had anybody go after the junior title in that, and they do usually put juniors in this tournament. So we'll see what happens with that, especially with Hiromu Takahashi saying that his goal as as, um, junior heavyweight champion is to main event Wrestle Kingdom as a junior heavyweight champion, which has never been done. So now they did have... They did have the semifinal match at this last um, Wrestle Kingdom for night two. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm, I'm sure that that could take place. Now, the very next um, event, the big event they're going to have is going to be two nights. It's going to be called Castle Attack, where um, they're gonna, they've condensed their shows to like maybe five, six matches because they're under a strict... Uh, COVID guideline right now to where everybody has to be back in their homes by eight o'clock. Right. So they've been doing very, they've been doing shows very early, like the five, five or six o'clock starts, and they've only been having like five or six matches during their shows. So on the first night, February twenty seventh, they're going to have Kazuchika Okada going up against Evil, who, which uh, this has been, they've been going at each other pretty heavy here recently. Tomohiro Ishii versus Jay White. Uh, Jay White actually, after Wrestle Kingdom, said that he was going to retire or he was going to leave in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and um, because of what happened, uh, Ishii wound up jumping him after the match that they had that, that he had, and was very upset at how he was being treated and how he was being uh, how they, they went uh, during that match and being jumped. So he ended up coming back like two weeks later. Come to find out. He was in, he was still trying to figure out whether he wanted to resign or not. Right. So so now he's back. Uh, they, like I said earlier, they're going through the uh, real Bullet Club era right now and doing that storyline. So um, that should be an interesting match because they've been having some hard hitting matches. Ishii is a throwback to the real uh, Japanese strong style. So we'll see what happens with that. That, that should be a good match. Uh, the Toro Yanu Chase Owens match I was mentioned earlier will be on the 27th on that card. Uh, they have uh, go uh, as of as of la- earlier this week there was a six man tag team defense with uh, Ishi Godo and Toro and uh, Yoshihashi versus Jay White and the Gorillas of Destiny, which they uh, they wound chaos wound up retaining. So after that match, Yoshihashi challenged 
G.O.D. for their tag team championships with him teaming up with uh, Goto. So now they have individual matches that are going to be taking on the 27th. So Goto will be taking on Tama Tonga, and Yoshihashi will be taking on uh, Tonga Loa. And then to start the show, it'll be uh, Kojima, Tenzan, and Hiroshi Tanahashi, the openweight champion against the, a, new, a newer faction called uh, the United Empire, which is Will Ospreay, the Great Okan, and Jeff Cobb. So that'll be that'll be the match for the match the card for the twenty seventh. On the twenty okay. eighth, you'll have um, Koto Ibushi uh, defending the Intercontinental Title only against Tetsuya Naito. As uh, here here uh, earlier this week, uh, uh, Ibushi defended his title against Sonata and wound up retaining. Uh, Naito came out and said, I know that you're trying to unify the two belts. You're saying that it makes no sense to have two belts now since nobody is really um, trying to go after the Intercontinental belt anymore. But I want the Intercontinental belt because I believe there still should be two belt, two uh, separate belts. So he's going after the Intercontinental belt saying that he's going to go after that one first. And because he wound up losing the belts to Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom, he doesn't feel that he's worthy of the heavyweight championship yet. So he's in. in if anybody knows what, uh, has anybody seen of uh, the show Afro Samurai? He wants mm-hmm. to go after the number one headband before he goes after the, t- the title. So right. he's, earn- he's earning his spot. So um, you got. You, you also have Hiromu Takahashi, Takahashi going up against El Fantasmo. For the junior heavyweight titles, um, Hiromu and um, Hiromu had had just had a match here recently, where um, he defended the title against Sho from Rapungi 3K, and they came out. Uh, El Fantasma came out and jumped him. Ishimori came in to help. Ibushi came out and um, and uh, helped out Hiromu. They cleared the ring. And then Tanaha El Fantasmo challenged him for the junior heavyweight championship belt. He said, um, Hiromu said, sure, I'll defend my title against you only if you defend your junior heavyweight tag titles against me and Bushi. So you got that, they got that match getting ready to get set up. And this, this, this starts out the whole thing with this title match. Now you got a, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi who's going to go up against the great Okan for the Never Openweight Championship. You've got um, Goto and Yoshihashi that's going to go after the heavyweight tag team championships against the GOD. And to, uh, you, and to start out the show, you're going to have Yano, Tomohiro, I, Toro Yano, Tomohiro Ishii, and Kazuchika Okada going up against Evil, Jay White, and uh, Chase Owens. And then you'll also have Kojima and Tenzan, or the tag team known as Tenkozy, going up against Will Ospreay and Jeff Cobb of the um, United Empire. So that's everything. That pretty much caught up on who the champions are, uh, who the main storylines within these uh, uh, organizations. And if you have any questions, gentlemen. Is everybody out? Well, I got to say, it's been a while, so I haven't had the the privilege of hearing you pronounce all those names, so kudos to you, sir, in 2021 for getting uh, through your segment and being able to go ham with uh, perfect pronunciations of everybody's names from... English to the Spanish to Japanese. <laughs> so uh, that's always my favorite. You'd be going in, well, I can get through half of that. Like, there's going to be quite a few name butcherings by the time we get done. But hey, that's what happens when you get your own segment. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was just Nubian. Hey, G, I'm surprised you ain't marked out yet from uh, my background. Uh, oh. 
I'm, I'm saving that because I, I'm, I'm jealous. Because I, if I'd have known that's what we're gonna come with, I was gonna find out how to come with SmackDown too. But well, I mean, you know, next week, man, next week, trying to trying to jazz it up. Last week was the Royal Rumble. This week, you gotta take it to the Almighty, no mercy. But speaking of this week being uh, the day before Valentine's Day, or you could just call it Valentine's Eve, we had the special. Uh, long-awaited return of Dash Just Nubian, taking us from 2020 into 2021, catching us up to date. And then we have you coming with your special assignment being talking about the Lovebirds. So we are going to have an extra special treat as KG is going to give you his personal top 10 uh, couples or power couples of all time. And I'm quite sure you're number one without you even have to go. We'll just give the spoiler now. Is the killer bees? Not quite. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't think they would appreciate you calling them a couple. Uh, they were called a couple. They, they while I her, so. Um. I did a lot of scouring for this, and it's it's a lot of old school couples that were left out of my top ten. Mm. Uh, so let's start with the honorable mentions. Okay. First and foremost, before I start with that, it's a joy to be back and 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 right here with you guys on a Saturday night. You know, all my rowdy friends are back for Saturday night. Cheap pop, cheap pop. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, honorable mentions, and I, I went from hottest to power couples, you know, just couples. So, first honorable mention, Steve Austin at the time was stunning Steve Austin, and later from WCCW. Uh, yeah, you were you went old school on that, yeah. You yeah. dug in a crate, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert and Missy Hyatt from the UWF slash NWA days. Got to have them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tommy Dreamer and Beulah McGillicuddy from ECW. Yeah. yeah. Then what about Raven and Beulah? But sorry, go ahead, your list. <laughs> uh, also, also, honorable mention to China and Triple H. And Lana and Rusev. Now, number 10, Matt Hardy and Lita. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Because when she started performing with the Hardy Boys, it was it, it was it was power. Really? Uh Edge and Lita, number nine. Really? <laughs> That's disrespectful. Well, it happened. The man that took his girl, and then you're going to put the man that took your girl at a higher spot than you with your girl? Because the heat, the heat that it generated. God dang, that's grimy. It's the heat that it generated, man. Grimy. If I was, if I was Matt Hardy, you'd be getting that V1 right now. Well, number eight. Edge the party and leader? Nah, Edge and Beth Phoenix. <laughs> Number Edge seven. and Beth Phoenix, okay. Yeah. Number seven. He stole my thunder with it, so I had to put it in there, but I had it in there already because I did this list earlier. Chuck and Billy. They were a couple, no, no matter how you want to put it. They were a couple. Look so <laughs> good to me. I actually enjoyed that uh that their 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 uh their entrance music. I always loved it. Um number six, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. Okay. Number five, DDP Diamond, Dallas Page, and Kimberly Page. Number four, Miz and Maurice. I think I know where this is going for number one, but go ahead. Number three. Well, make sure you camera on, James, so we can see you react to it. 
Number three, my personal favorite, all time wrestling couples because it, it, it shaped a, a, a generation, and that would be the Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth. Oh, what? I thought that was going to be your number one. Oh, okay. 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 You, Number Look two, back. Stephanie McMahon Helmsley and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh, man. And my number one wrestling power couple of all time. All time. All time. Linda Dusty, and Dusty, Dusty, Dusty Rhodes and what's her name? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Linda and Vince McMahon. Really? Boo. Boo. Really? When you talk power, power? Okay, let me let me put it to you this way. When we talk power couples, we gotta have couples with power. Those oh, are couples. That's a couple with power. You saying you have a uh, criteria? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I need you saying to know what you do. Uh, <laughs> that's father of Legion of Doom. You hear this, James? <laughs> this is this big man. How I much of a you... mark are you? That's what I was about to say. Sounds like some mark markism going on today. Yeah, man. Like, yeah. How? Yes. How? Really? How? I mean, if Don't you want to talk, I'll sway me. You you want to talk power couples? See, when, when, justify, you say, justify. Oh, no. when you said power couple, my mind immediately went to Barack and Michelle. Black Panther and Storm. That's a power couple right there. That's like the greatest black power couple you'll ever find is Black Panther and Storm. We're not going to get into that, though. Now, hold on, my phone's ringing. Y yeah, Vince? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, he marked out hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's uh, he, he's still on the team, is what you said? <laughs> oh, Okay. That, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, I'll get him a bib so that way he can wipe the milk off. All right. All right. Thanks, Vince. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Criteria. I know, right? <laughs> uh, that's a that's a song, John, right there, man. When they start throwing up criteria. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that time when you know he was talking bad about my list from all the way on the first show, and this dude go ahead and double down on it. Yeah. One job. Two weeks. One job. And he can't. Yeah. I know, right? I would have went with you too. I know, but he's not the normal Mark. So, uh, oh, okay. I know you got to go. You got to go be a power couple. It's Valentine's Day. All right. Tell Linda I said hi. All right. Um, thank you. Wow. Sorry, I had to take that. That was uh, Vincent Kennedy. Okay. Now we go back to the first show. <laughs> you had a hundred people. Who's the greatest tag team of all time? <laughs> 99 of them are going to say the Legion of Doom. I'm sorry. They're going to say the Road Wars, not the Legion of Doom. That one person is you. Oh, uh, that's me. That's me with my criteria. I'm sorry, James. Would you? Who would you say is the one of the, well, your number one uh, power couple? Hmm. I guarantee you any Vincent, Kenny McMahon, and Linda McMahon. I wouldn't put, I would, I wouldn't put them up top. Uh, but I don't know who I would put up top like that. You know, this isn't my, but again, this isn't my list. So I would have said Macho and Elizabeth. I actually would have said, I guess I would have said Macho and Elizabeth myself. But yeah. Well, actually, I that's what I thought he was going to say. So, yeah. I, I had to redo the list because I started from 10 and went to one. Number one was me and Naya. Number two was me and Alexa Bliss. Number three was me and, and Liv Morgan. Number four was me and, 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 and Nikki Cross. You know, I, but I was like, that's not a true list. I mean, yeah, we all power couples. I mean, the ladies love Dylon, me. Dylon, 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 Dylon. But, you know, the ladies love me nice and then soft. I hate male groupers, so just step the hell off. Think, come on, man. Come, come, come on, man. You just, you hating on the list because it was better than yours. Don't even worry about it, play. Oh, I thought you would have known. one. I thought you were going to be like, shake my hand, make it a firm shake. Say what's up, Ice Cube, and then break. Gonna, I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm telling you, you asked for a list, and you, you know what? By the, you know, by me being based 
in, in, I didn't say give me the list of Jericho. You know. <laughs> My my list is like is John like yeah on mothers and you hate you can't say it's like like yeah it, it's like yeah though John like you ain't I mean, gonna put it on mothers it's like you went to Walmart and you bought the first WWE logo logo uh, composition notebook you found turned it to the fifth page. Drew a picture of Vince McMahon and said, "I got you, dog." And then just built the rest around the list around that. No WWE logo. I say sideline junkies number two. Mm. Uh, uh, and who's the the greatest football player of all time? Is that also Vincent Kennedy McMahon? The no, greatest that would be, that receiver would be. is uh, Shane McMahon. But see, that's a different story for a different time because you got to, you got to, that you actually have to have criteria. Are we talking greatest athlete or greatest all around football player? Or just greatest football player? You have to don't say Tom Brady. You all right with me? No, it's Jim Brown. You have the greatest power couple and you came with Vince McMahon. What, 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 what does not, if it, you were talking about power, what is ultimate power if it's not Vincent Kennedy McMahon and Linda McMahon? You know I'm gonna let you have it. I'm gonna let you have it. But number one, one the number one it. power couple in wrestling is Booker T and Shawn Mel. Didn't even make the list in Black History Month. Wow. Because guess what? Can I don't need a month. But no, no, no. I don't need a month to celebrate my history. I celebrate my history every day. King. He had his own rap video. He stood like this for 45 minutes. You couldn't even give the man a shot. Sucker. You done? You put Edge in twice. Put you done? Me. Put Lita in twice. You know what? Matt Hardy should be even matter. He could have been ranked high on the list if Vince wasn't there. I had the man steal his girl, make a higher list. Then the man get with another girl and steal higher than Matt Hardy. God, yeah, he could even get Reba, Reba in there. God. Dude, how about Jamie Noble and, L- and Nidia? How about Gresham and uh and Jordan Grace? Yeah, you had a gay couple in there. You ain't even put in an interracial couple. See, you were racist. How about Otis and Mandy? I sat down and I worked hard on this. How about John Cena and Nikki Bella, pre-baby? Well, that would be pre-baby. You wouldn't have to say that because John Cena wasn't trying to have no babies. How about The Rock and everybody? The Rock and Pie. Poontang. How about the, the King and the Cat? China and X-Pac. What, what, what power did China and X-Pac have? But, mm-hmm. Besides One Night in China, which is... That was a lot of power. <laughs> it, it was pretty decent. It was right pretty decent. I ain't going to lie about it. Another <laughs> night in China was pretty good too, but I'm not gonna go there. That was a lot. I don't oh, know. China, China. Uh, no mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of motivation that came after that. God dang it. We we not gonna go. We not gonna go there because I, look. If, what, what about what about uh, Jeff Hardy and uh, Kurt Angle wife? I'm, I'm not even gonna say a name because you know that's still that's grimy, but. I, I, Who I thought that, Jeff Hardy or Jeff Jarrett? I thought Jeff Jarrett. Oh, Jeff, Jarrett, Jarrett, Jarrett. Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, yeah. That because that's not a power couple. You asked me for a power couple. Power. Well, we just naming couples. You could have put us. You could have gave him a couple of slots in there. Man, you you said power couple. What about uh, I don't know? Kind of one of the biggest couples that's happening right now. And uh, Montez Ford and Bianca Belair. But, I mean, you know. Well, I'm going to side with KG on this because you did say power couples. I mean, yeah, well, I I can uh, give it to him. I give it to him. Okay. I mean, how much more power can you have other than Vince and yeah. Linda? So, hey, hey, Linda. Yeah. Uh, is James is pole riding? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's he, he pole riding hard right now. Oh, 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 okay. 
All right, yeah, you go ahead and do your thing, Linda. I appreciate it. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'm not sure um, why a Hulk and Linda Hogan wasn't on there either. Yeah, I know that's kind of crazy, right? Man, dang, they had some power. They actually had their own reality show. Yeah, I know, right? It was a good show. I watched it. Hogan knows best. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. A Bully Ray and Brooke uh, Hogan. Yeah, that's right. They yeah they did do that TNA stint thingy back in the day. Yep. Yeah. Oh. You know what, Linda? I'm gonna stop talking to you because you brought up a good one. All right, sorry. Uh, I'll talk later. Bye bye. Yeah, uh, Linda also talked about you know Mark Henry and May Young. You can't have any more power than giving life to a hand. Just saying. But thank you, KG, for um, your extra kayfabe, extra mark out uh, segment. We will probably never ask you to do it again because if I was a, say, Vincent Kennedy and anything, y'all would be going ham on me. But KG got his hair did, you know, wore the S on his chest. It should be an M uh, because I'm quite sure he's trying to uh, get his piece of the McMahon pie, even though he won't be letting the front door. But this is the principle of the thing. Maybe he'll, put, maybe he'll put you in the pool. That, that, that if given the chance, if Stephanie called right now, and said, I'm leaving him. Oh, she I right. want you. Nah, she gonna go after Devon first. Devon, Devon to put deep, deep. Hey, he put that out there. Hey, <laughs> he, did, like, he, he did shoot a shot. He shot. He shoot. He did shoot a shot. Now, yeah. Well, I had a crush. I'm like, yeah, you ain't the only one, dog. Space put. Now, everybody that you know, I've dated and don't marry knew. I said, hey. You ain't got to worry about nobody else. But if I get that shot and the the, the light is green, I don't know what to tell you, but that track won't be clean because I'm putting that work in immediately. And that's like zero to pregnant. It's, gonna, it's only going to take one time. It's going to be like them uh, old sex ed infomercials. It can only take one time. You got that going right. It's like all my testicles are like, we fire in one shot and it's going to make it. Yes. <laughs> You'll be like you'll be like you'll be like Dave Chappelle with Oprah. Got the bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. No disrespect uh, to any of these lovely ladies and power couples. Just saying. But for real though, for real though, I'm just house saying. Way. House way. Why are you mad about my list? I'm not mad about. I'm just pointing out that you know for some reason. Uh, the, the, the glass house that, you know, you living in had a couple, I don't know, accidental hail droppings that bust through. Cause you know, I know those bricks you were throwing at me. But wait, but wait, hard. see, see, I don't live in a glass house. Yeah, you're right. It just shattered. Man. It just I'm broke. A man. You living in a frame house now cause all the glass broke and we ain't talking a stone cold joke. I, I can't, I can't live in a glass house. Uh huh. My feelings is hurt. Hey, that's okay. I took my hard earned time where I could have been sleeping or, or, or finishing my dag on playoff game against Baltimore because I couldn't keep Lamar Jackson in the god dag on pocket. Don't get, don't don't get mad, Sway. It's okay. You 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 messed up so bad. James had to turn his camera off. You know that's bad. My camera's still on. We can't see. I don't know where is that. Y'all must have turned me off then because I'm on. How we turn you off? You know, you turned it my, off. My, my camera says, my camera expression. right here says I'm on. You didn't want to give any facial expressions. I had to be the only one trying to keep it cool as we got the number one and then hearing what he said out his mouth. See, I, you know what? I'm not. Chris I'm Tucker not and Jackie Chan. I'm not Plus doing any more homework assignments. See, this is why I didn't do homework in high school. Yeah, because clearly, yeah. You was good on test, but when it came down to homework, nah. This is this is this is this is why I didn't do homework in high school. It's not appreciated. That's okay. We appreciate the effort. You get a participation award. Uh 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 uh. -uh. uh, -uh. No, I'm not from that generation. No, no. Your, your medal, your medal's in the mail. No, I'll <laughs> send it back to you. No, no. Well, I'll send it back with a Vince and uh, Linda autograph. I appreciate it. I know you got the inside track. 
Well, I mean, I know you got the inside track. I mean, you the one with the dag on got the 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 uh the, the letters on WWE stationery. Hey man, Cease don't be ha- orders. Hey, don't hate on my game. And why you hating on mine? Oh, because you know it hurt my feelings, man. You push me off the teeth so you can get on. I you know, I lost my meal ticket. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn. What? Was it really was it really that bad? Yeah, it was that bad. <laughs> I mean, okay. No, Wait, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, well, no, since, well, since we spent so much bit, time on it, I was in the power couple. Since we spent spending so much time on it, Uh-oh. do you not agree with Stephanie and Triple H? Yeah, I think they should be on the list. But I was. But you don't. You don't I'm feel number two from the professional standpoint of running the business, but as being characters on the show and influencing the business based off of their storylines. Yeah, they should be on it. Okay, you don't think Seth and Becky should be on it? No, I mean, that they're, they're not really, in my opinion, a power couple. They're just a couple of top-tier uh, superstars. But they didn't really tap into the, the, the storyline that much of them. Right, true. But when have you seen a couple, a <clears throat> man and a woman, hold their respective titles, and Becky was holding both belts at the same time. And Seth was, what was he, the the Raw champion, I believe? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If they would have gotten more into that, they could have power. went in a better direction than what they did. That's power to me. Miz but, and Maurice, that's power, because they hold sway outside of the wrestling world. That's power. I, I, can, I can see, you know, Miz and Maurice in there. Chuck and Billy. Because you know why? They were trailblazers. That's power. <laughs> what were they blazing? <laughs> each other's saddle. Blaz- but blazing each other. In <laughs> well, that case, Goldust and Marlena. Could have went there. But I'm saying that's power. It takes a lot to actually play that character at that time. It wasn't as comfortable as it is now. This, we're talking 20 some odd years ago. Vincent but no, 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 take that back. It was about 20, 21, 19, 20 years ago. It wasn't, everybody wasn't as comfortable now. They were trailblazers because they played that role. Power. Power. And I ain't talking about the TV show. Power. <laughs> All right, well, just make sure you're not going to be going out at 2 o'clock in the morning trying to get you some Subway. And then, you know, Trip fall and get injured. Talk about they heard this list, and that's why you got beat down because they didn't agree with it. Yeah, make, watch your back for Jesse. <laughs> if I'm going out at two o'clock in the morning for Subway, <laughs> it's a problem. Well, you could say that you was going out to the go go, but then the police be like, "Where's that at?" They be like hey. go go. What is it? You know, you sitting there 40 minutes trying to explain what the heck it is. They were like, this pool line. Nope, nope, nope. See, they asked me, where is it? Which one you want to go to? We can go to the ice box. We can go to the black hole. We can go to the DC tunnel. Which one you want to go to? Sound like it got that astrology uh, map. Like, what the heck? That's we can why go to the now because you got to be a scientific uh, uh, a pontificator to figure out what the heck it is. I- I'm sorry. We'll just take you somewhere where they just keep playing the same song over and over. It's time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. <laughs> hey, man, again, as soon as you walk out of Starbucks, you're tired because you know you got a bunch of coffee. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, you got look. You got to drink a bunch of coffee to dance to that. You're going to need a bunch of coffee to keep yourself awake from hearing the same beat for four hours. Let me, let me explain something to you. How are you going to have an album of 18 different names of the same beat. When you get that Coke bottle breezy in front of you and she get to swaying them hips on you, you ain't worried about the beat no more. You just worried about keeping time with the beat, with, with, with the hips and holding on to them so you don't fall off. For everybody, it's the same beat. If you don't notice the beat in the beginning, I guarantee you'll be a pro by the end. 16 hours later, God dang, it's the same daggone beat. Like, well, I'm a pro now. I can teach anybody how to dance to the go-go. Just no, follow the same beat. No, you can't. Because you get it, and all of a sudden you hear that holy sauce, and that's it. That's it. 
you you don't know nothing about that. No, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Because you, <sighs> you stepping into uncharted territory. We're not gonna do this tonight. It's <laughs> uncharted territory. Show. We're not gonna do this tonight. I couldn't figure out the territory. It's like walking out into the, the wilderness with no flashlight. Like just follow the sound. It's the same sound. But this is the thing though. But it's this a good thing. sound. Exactly. And yeah, the thing is, after you go to the go go, you're gonna want five wings and, and, and french fries and mumbo sauce, or you're gonna want a half smoke. Which one you I'd want? I'd love to find it. I'd love to get the food if I can figure out where the go go is. You pick the club. We can't because we don't know what it is. You do know what it is. It's Let me the, just send outside the Metro. DC. Let me just stand outside Metro. At least that way I can kind of figure it out. It's the official music of the DC. Yep, and we see how that worked out for you guys. Meanwhile, in Baltimore, everybody drinking coffee thanks to the percolator. See how that works out? It, it had a purpose. And we, we still don't even know what that song was about. I seen the dude talk about it this time with the percolator while he was taking Percocet. So I don't even know what the hell it was about. Oh, I guarantee you by the time he got done, he was Percocet and percolating and everything he was probably else. On the James. Yes. What what kind of music y'all listen to down at North Kakalaki? Go go. We listen to some of everything. We had go go. I told y'all. I said in the. I said in the show before. Uh, I found. I found out about go go before I knew what go go was. Chuck Brown was coming. Chuck Brown was coming to an old hole in the wall about two miles from my house, about three times a year. Chuck Brown, the Soul Searchers, right there on that on that sign by the road with the arrow pointing this way, the yellow, big yellow one that you put on the side of the road. Chuck Brown coming this, this Saturday. And I sit outside that club and listen to Chuck Brown. And by the time I got to college, I was like, wait a minute, I know that song. Oh, yeah, that's Chuck Brown. That's Go Go. Okay. Yeah. I'm with it. I bet you it was like Shazam, easy to recognize. I know that beat. Hey, which song is it? It's about 40 of them to choose from. See, see the thing is, <laughs> with Chuck Brown, Chuck Brown. Is a piece of black history because what he played was a lot of Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington songs. He played a lot of big band era songs. Run Joe is a song from the 30s. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you now tapping into Black History Month? But you ain't I'm have no black people on the power couples? No I'm black tapping, people. I'm tapped into black history 24 7, 365. I don't need no month to define you my black you history. Put one black power couple on the list? Really? Hey, at least hey, at least at least we're not in Michigan. You know there's a governor running for you know there's a, a a Nigerian native who is running for governor of Michigan who's trying to get rid of Black History Month in the state of Michigan mm -hmm. as, his, as his platform. Got that going, Travis. But it is it is it is Valentine's Eve, so I still I told James this earlier, so I will tell you the same thing, KG. In my brother love voice. I told you not to do that no more. I love you. I knew it was coming. See, see, no, no, see. That was I even worse was than the coming. first one. Did you see that face? Did you see that face? I knew oh, my was God. Oh, oh, man. Never in your lifetime do that again. Oh, you said no. that. I've already done it twice now. This guy. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's the face only a McMahon could love, I tell you that much. Yeah. That's that's why you get invited to Christmas, not me. Definitely. That's why that's why you got him on speed dial. Shoot, that's not the McMahon I'm talking about. Mm hmm Yeah, you ain't got her on speed dial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Cause See, I, I guarantee you, 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 you know it's on speed dial. You you'd at least fly a brother in, you know. Shoot, I'll be devil, I'll be delivering to that door every day. Yeah, uh, I got your Amazon. Thanks. I got your FedEx. Like you work for all of them? Yes, I do. Well, and what store to Grace at? Do you know? Because KG was asking. Um, so thank, thank you, KG. I know uh, we went kind of in on that, but uh, we were just shocked. We I didn't expect. Eat. We didn't. Eat. So now I guess since you know you pretty much gassed me, you know, I've blown up now, so you ruined the whole entire show. <laughs> so
So I guess uh, we know that we're on the road to WrestleMania. Elimination Chamber is next weekend. So next weekend we'll definitely be doing our picks for the EC, uh, especially trying to lay out where the WWE and truth can go to build towards WrestleMania in the smartest way. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, how you feel about them stretching out the decisions on the men's and the women's <coughs> Royal Rumble winner choosers uh, for Edge deciding who he's going to face between NXT Raw and SmackDown and Bianca Belair be, you know, between NXT Raw and and SmackDown, they're waiting until after the Elimination Chamber to make a decision. Do you think that is just them just stretching because they have no plans and no idea? Or do you think it's strategic for, I'm assuming where it's going to be Fastlane, if they're still going to keep that pay-per-view build uh, right before WrestleMania, um, that, that they're trying to set that up because they have this Peacock deal that's supposed to be First, uh, the first pay per view is going to be WrestleMania, uh, so they're trying to build it in that way. But to me, and like I said, I want to get you guys' opinion. I think it's kind of stupid for there not to be a decision, uh, especially when you've got major potential for Roman Reigns to have a, a huge match uh, with or without Kevin Owens, with or without The Rock. We don't know, um, so that's kind of in limbo. So, really, is it Finn Balor, in my opinion, or is it uh, Drew McIntyre? And then, for Bianca Belair, do I really want to see Bianca versus um, uh, Io Shirai? No. Do I want to see Bianca versus uh, uh, Dagon uh, uh, Boss? Uh, well, dang it. I'm totally brain farting on her name right now. Sasha awesome. Banks. No, I mean, I guess to me the only true pick would be um, Asuka, if she's still the champion at that point, versus uh, Bianca Belair is who I would rather see. But you you tell me, is, is it stretching too long, or is it make sense to you? I don't know. James? Well, it's usually traditional for one of the champions to defend inside the Elimination Chamber, so... I, I I think it's a, I think it's what they regularly do. They always do this. They always stretch well, out the decision. Roman is not doing it. Right. Well, that's why I said it's, all, it's usually only one that does it that defends inside. So I can see where they do. I can see. I was I was going to see. Um. McIntyre in the elimination chamber. I expected that. How they were going to do Roman, I wasn't sure. But now that they've got the winner of the Elimination Chamber going immediately after Roman to defend, uh, I could that that make that kind of makes sense in his storyline and the way that he oper that, that they're operating with him. So for them to wait until after Elimination Chamber, I could see that. I mean, it's not like they don't have like over a month to build up to WrestleMania. So it's it's smart for them to do. I mean, stretch it out because I mean, look. With as far as um, Bianca's concerned, look who, like you said, you got Sasha, you got Oscar. I'm thinking Oscar is going to have to defend against Charlotte. That's just my opinion. I think that's going to be the WrestleMania match. It's Oscar and Charlotte, and then Sasha and Bianca. As far as um, Edge is concerned, I see Edge going more so with Roman Reigns. Really? I see Edge going with Roman Reigns, and I'm not really sure who's going to come out of um, who's going to end up with um, McIntyre. McIntyre might end up losing that belt during the Elimination Chamber because you that that Raw Elimination Chamber match is way better than the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match, and I the agree. fact that they don't have a women's title, a women's Elimination Chamber, is upsetting to me. Because I was hoping that at least one of them, I, I, th I'm thinking, I was thinking that SmackDown was going to have the women's elimination chamber. Because it could have been a better, it could have been a better match. Because you could have put, you could have put, you could have ended up having um, Nia and Shayna in that match, going up against Sasha, Beck, uh, Bailey, maybe Bianca. 
you probably could throw Bianca in there. But there's a few others. Uh, I know you could put Natalia in there because, you know, they they use her kind of like with this boat thing. So they'll throw her in there. So, but yeah, I was kind of upset that they're not doing the Elimination Chair match for the women. But yeah, I, it makes sense to me that there's that they're waiting because this is what they usually do. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I was th- the reason why I said earlier that you know if Oscar keeps the belt because I would think that she would lose to Charlotte in just a match, and then it would be Charlotte, you know, versus uh, Bianca for the I go here match because I mean Bianca's merch is already on fire and and out there. For the EST in WrestleMania, that merch is already out. So I'm hoping, knock on wood, that they um, are not overhyping her, and then she lose, and like, well, your consolation prize is you were in the WrestleMania main co-main event. Uh, no, I mean, I don't want them to diminish that. She needs that WrestleMania moment, and she needs to be champion. Period. But uh, for you, KG, the reason why I pose the question is because I think the longer that they wait the less believable, in my opinion, that Edge is going to walk out as a champion of whatever brand, period. Because, like, really? You know, they're turning kind of Drew McIntyre into Super Cena, where he's just beating everybody in every situation. Roman Reigns, you know, if he loses, he loses the table. And... How's that going to work with Edge because he's on limited? And then if Edge beats Finn Balor, that just destroys Finn Balor, in my opinion. So I don't know. What, what do you think? I agree with James. It's something that they always do. But it think about it. After Elimination Chamber, you got a lot of injuries. People are nicked up. So you don't know what the landscape's going to look like. Elimination Chamber will change the whole entire landscape of wrestling because you don't – somebody's going to get hurt. That's a given. So one well, of those somebody's already hurt. Actually, you know, you've heard about uh, Braun Strowman. Yeah. So I, I, I already a whole yeah. Braun Strowman got an infection that went into his bloodstream. He wound up losing like fifteen pounds in like a week. He put out a video here this week, earlier this week, saying that he's going to be out. So he was supposed to be in the Raw Elimination Chamber. So mm-hmm. we so. There's a hole in the elimination chamber already. Now, from what I'm thinking, if they go and do what they what they've been the storyline they've been doing, they'll probably put Mustafa Ali in that hole. If he wins, that would kind of justify retribution a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Also, could put Brock Lesnar in that hole. Why? Because you have built. Drew McIntyre's beat everybody. Who's going to take the belt off of him? I don't want it to be Brock Lesnar. He's going to walk into this elimination chamber and walk out the champion. So he's going he's to beat a crew of more people. And then who's going to take the belt off of him? Name, give me one name. One name that could take the belt off of him. Right now. Off, off of Drew McIntyre? And it's believable. And- the Rock. The Rock's out of it. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> he's not promoting his show. He's young. He's young Dwayne right now. I say. I say. Drew McIntyre retains after WrestleMania, and Edge takes the belt from him after. After he loses to uh, Roman Reigns, because he's already he's pretty much a Raw superstar anyway. So you <laughs> think Edge can beat Drew McIntyre? I do. But see, now I had it the other way. I had actually Edge challenging Finn Balor. And I don't think Finn Balor losing the title takes anything from him. But you could we can sit down and we can take and I say we Don, James and myself can sit down. We could put a storyline together that can run for 6 months to a year in 2 hours. I don't even think we need 2 hours. It's just 2 hours just, we probably need an hour and a half just to figure out what the hell we're going to eat. The other 30 minutes is putting everything together and making it making it believable to really run. Where you can have them two going back and forth. But it also brings ratings to NXT on Tuesday night. I, mean, I, don't, yeah. see them, I don't see them doing that two years in a row, though. They did, it with, they, did it, they did it with Charlotte last year. 
and, and look how it went. And they got this thing going with him and um with uh Finn Balor and uh Pete Dunn that's gonna go on tomorrow night. Uh I think that's gonna run for a while. I don't think I don't think they're gonna put Edge up against Finn Balor. I really don't. But now look how it worked with Sean. Look how good it worked. It boosted the ratings. They 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 did win a couple of weeks against um AEW. They won a couple of weeks. Didn't win many, but they won a couple. Now imagine you do that and then you add more to the mix. It's like you it's like you're making grits and they're too thin, so you add a little bit more grits to make them a little bit thicker. Then you add a little bit of butter and a little sugar, and you stir oh, it up a little bit, but it's still, it's still to thin down a little bit, so you got to add a little bit more grits. You got to add some more grits in there, make it a little thick. We're kind of in the middle of where we are, so uh, are you uh, sugar or salt and pepper on your grits? I, 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 before anybody says anything, if either one of y'all say y'all put sugar on your grits, you just I will be, I will be I will be um Kevin Nash because I will have y'all fight. He just said it. He just gave you his recipe. No sugar in the grits, no sugar on rice, no sugar in spaghetti, none of that. <laughs> Poor guy. He ain't, he ain't never had no real food. Bullshit. The beat will be <laughs> hey look. Hey, look, I'm more country than either one of y'all motherfuckers. So, yo, anybody that puts sugar in their grits needs to be shot for shit and killed for stinking. Wow. <laughs> See, tell, tell, tell KG how you really feel about them. Hey, tell me how you really feel. I'm just saying, that's blasphemy. Okay, this is what just I'm like going to do. Just like, just like in my cousin Vinny, there's no such thing as instant grits. It's true. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm trying to get my mother to do it. When my mother makes a big breakfast, I'm going to make sure I bring you something to eat. If you put sugar in my grits, you can keep that shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, KG, you don't know, understand, man. And you, you know, know not, and you know not to bring me no swine. I know, I know. Look, we didn't already had that with the whole barbecue thing. He called me and was like, when you coming to get this out of my house so I can disaffect my refrigerator? Damn right. <laughs> I had, to call I, a has, I had to call a hazmat team to clean out my refrigerator. Mm, mm, mm. But he called himself country, though. Oh, I am country. KG, country yeah. again. On, since that day that I lifted him up above my head and slammed him. In oh, the my God. Here we go. I took all his heart out, man. That's my fault. I apologize. I changed the whole diet. <laughs> but no, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring you no pork or nothing like that. I, I make sure we got... Everything that you eat, but when you eat pork bouillon in your tag on grits, <laughs> when you eat, I take bouillon over them sugar. But no, no, no. When you eat my mother's grits and her eggs, now you can take the grits and the eggs and mix that together, and it's it, 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 it's it's black excellence. But when oh, you eat my oh, mother's, yeah, of course, that's the only way to you, eat. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? It's it's like, and then you got that honey butter biscuit to catch the. Oh my lord, jeez, I'm hungry. Oh man, hungry, got, hungry. I, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for inciting a riot, but uh, I, I saw the low hanging fruit, so I had to make sure that uh, we see if the debate was real. And as you can tell, the North and the South is not about slavery; it's about grits. <laughs> it's well, about I'm below the, I'm below the Mason Dixon line, so I'm still part of the South. Thank you very much. First was Domino Sugar. It ain't got to be Domino. Shoot, it could be Shopper's brand for all I care. It's no, as long as it's sugar. No, no, no. That Domino's. And if you really want to get froggy, put some brown sugar in it. Mm -hmm. I don't care is... what color it is. <laughs> no, no sugar in my grits. No sex in the champagne. No, no I ain't saying that. I ain't saying that. <laughs> <I ain't saying laughs> that. <laughs> we ain't going there. Oh man! I see you had to throw Domino sugar in it. You had to throw Domino sugar in there. It couldn't be no other sugar. It had to be Domino. You had to throw. You just like, you know what? They talking a little North South, North Carolina, DC. Let me throw a little Baltimore in it. Hit it. Ah, <laughs> ah, throw that Domino sugar in there. Hey man, you know they percolate that sugar, so you got to make sure it's <laughs> nice and nice and right. So by the time y'all get it in DC, you are good. <laughs> Domino sugar a little too expensive for my taste. Hey, hold on, hold on. I don't hear anything about no go-go sugar. Yeah, you're we right. We don't need go-go sugar. 
That's right, because they don't know what it is. Like, what you put in that go-go sugar? We can't tell you. We, the main ingredient is go-go. We have no clue what the hell that is. So, <laughs> so uh, I think that's a good stopping point, gentlemen, because uh, tomorrow is NXT uh, TakeOver. So, we will see what their Valentine's Day extravaganza is going to be. And I guarantee you that number one Valentine power couple that they're going to do a segment on is not going to be Vince and Linda. Um, just saying, and nah, maybe it's going Kier- to be Kieran and um, what's her name? And Scarlet. And Scarlet. Yeah. Uh-uh. Or Johnny or Johnny Gargano and um. Mrs. Johnny Wrestling. <laughs> or it could be Ricochet and uh. Right. K- uh, Casey uh, Cat and Sorrow. Y- y'all Who? keep talking about Valentine's Casey Day. And Casey Cat and Sorrow. I thought he. I thought she was still with um, Ricochet. That's what I just said. Oh, I didn't hear you. He's still on sugar. You 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 over there mumbling with your mouth full of Domino balls. <laughs> That's why you ain't on camera. So uh, <laughs> pay, pay your camera bill, sir. Pay your camera bill. Pay your fast. Uh, so, so we've got takeover. Well, with- well, well, since I'm not on camera, I'll give you this two finger salute. How about that? Uh, you don't get this fresh skibbity patch. You keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as I was saying, uh, we're gonna digest some uh, NXT takeover, and then uh, we're gonna cover all the go home shows next week to include uh, get a little bit more in detail next week for AEW Dynamite. Uh, and then we will do our first pick show of 2021, which will be our Elimination Chamber predictions next week. And then uh, we will see if we or who is correct in the shaping of the true road to WrestleMania as we get past the first of the last two obligatory matches uh, or pay-per-views before we get to WrestleMania. And then uh, if there's anything else that is bouncing or, or coming about, we'll discuss that as well. Because the one thing I'm tracking is how the WWE Network is going to transition everybody's account to a Peacock one. Uh, so not sure how that's going to happen because they are extremely quiet on this whole deal other than they just got paid uh, a couple hundred billion. And now everybody else is just going to have to decide if they are going to have Peacock. Or not have Peacock. Well, yes, it's, half, it's half price for ad, with, with ads. No, so, no. You take, you, you're paying ten dollars a month anyway. You just get the no ads. Because I couldn't. Yes, yes. Go ahead, KG. You guys don't already have Peacock? Hell no. Nah, man. Nah. What? Plus, plus Why not? not? I don't watch bad. regular TV like that. Paramount. No, I, no. no. L- 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 no, I got Disney, I got Hulu, I got Netflix, but Peacock, Peacock, I can watch Psych, I can watch all the Psych movies, plus I can watch all the Law and Order. KG, I can no, watch every episode of Law and Order. You need and, Pluto TV, that mess is free. Like, I, it's 24 hours of everything. Right. I got Tubi too. You say you got what? Tubi. Oh, everybody talk about that. That's free too. No, Tubi, I, Tubi, Tubi's nice. Tubi is nice. Yeah. I got Tubi too. Is that on Roku? No, it's just a regular app. I got it on my television. Well, yeah. I got it on. It's on my cable box, so you know, I haven't. Everybody else has cut the cord. I haven't cut the cord because I, a lot of shows that I watch, I can't cut the cord and watch them. Well, nobody, nobody's getting that uh, extra McMahon res- revenue from uh, giving them top billing. So you know, we all can't afford to have the cord and all that. We got to be out here penny pinching where we can in the pandemic. Meanwhile, you over here getting that, you know, nice little chunk of change. But you know, I want to gossip, so you ain't hear that for me. I work hard, man. Look at it. You, you know how hard I work because oh. I'm able to write these things off. You see this? You see this? This is the sideline junkies business phone. I write that off as a tax expense. Dag on it. And you can always feel free to call that number whenever you're ready. You know we're gonna talk about you, right? Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> so that is our week uh, as we come into the one hour and 30 minute mark of the show. Uh, so next week we got the picks, the go home results, and then uh, we'll, we'll see exactly if uh, KG 
had a great Valentine's Day, which one of his booze he actually spent time with. And then if he's still as keeping the same answer for his power couple, number one. Um, no, 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 what, no, what, what, what? I, I, I don't do Valentine's Day. Not at all. What? No. no. Does your wife know? Yeah, because we don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Well, I mean, I told her, I said, I'm going to act like an ass to you tomorrow. She said, I pretty much expect you to do that every day. But we celebrate the 15th. When candy goes half off, we can go ham and buy like $30 worth of candy for about 15 bucks. Oh, you celebrate Side Chick Appreciation Day. Yeah, we we go. We just go for the candy. That's all. I mean, she doesn't believe in getting flowers and gifts on the 14th because I'm giving her flowers and gifts every other day of the year for no reason. I I bought her roses on the way home from work just because. I think it was a Wednesday. Lovely, was it a Wednesday? Ah, she sleep. Don't worry about it. In but it was words, like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, then dig himself out the hole. That's really what he myself on the hole. My yeah, hole. Baby. My hole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you caught the the segue there. I was I leaving that out. I it earlier, but y'all didn't, y'all didn't bite. Well, or KG didn't get it, so I'm like, come on, man. I can't give it to you any bigger than that. And that was well, a big one too. Believe me, I, I when she said my hole, I bit, and it was pretty big. But um, <laughs> hey. when she said my hole, I saw you drop out. So <laughs> like that's where he been. You been gone for two weeks now. You found him. So hey. <laughs> extra love. That's now right. You know, now, you, now you know what she says when I'm with her. Oh no no, this is a children's. Show. Every night I got to fight to prove my love. It, this is a children's show. Yeah, it's so, okay. This hey, is hey, hey, hey. a children's show. Since when a lot of children have been consummated and created while doing the show. <laughs> but wait, not with, wait, not wait. with them faces you've been making talking about some I love you. <laughs> wait, hey James, I'ma say this. It's 2021. I'm not gonna put up with all this. You stealing my women. I knock all this shit over. Hey, do do, do all the furniture moving you need to do. And he's gonna make sure you put some sugar in your tank. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, no sugar in nobody's tank now. Nah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, you know what? You know what they say. Everybody want to talk about sugar in tank in the tank, but what's better than a tiger in your tank? Now I don't know. Ask Exxon. <laughs> Lipstick on your dipstick. Now let's get out of here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you gotta diversify your bonds and all that stuff. Kichiwa, and what else you gotta throw in there, James? We gotta go out hot on that one. <laughs> uh, I think we need to go ahead and end on that. I'm good. All right. <laughs> Speechless. He's been he, he eating uh marked out the beginning and the end of the show. So mission accomplished, ladies and gentlemen. Till next week. <laughs>